I've been very clever here. I've recorded 10 frequently asked questions for people, and I've also recorded 10 what I call should ask questions, which I call SAQ instead of FAQ. Should ask questions is really about what don't you know that you don't know? Which is a fancy way of saying, what are you ignorant about inadvertently? What don't you understand about my industry that I've specialized in? What don't I know about your industry? And if, if you're a chiropractor and I come in and say, look, look, what's the best way to get a spinal adjustment? Maybe I should really be asking, how can I get out of back pain? What movement should I do? You tell me things that I haven't even thought to ask. So the big question that most people have never really sat down and asked themselves uh, let alone me, is, well, why are drugs, why are pharmaceutical products proliferating our planet? And most people answer that, and they say, well, Will, that's obvious. It's a big industry. Pharma's big money. It's billions. It's trillions. It's the biggest industry on the planet. Everyone's sick and dying. It's a necessity. People need it. It's the perfect sales. That's obvious. What most people don't think about is why certain herbs are banned in, in parts of the world when herbs seemingly work so well, particularly the ones that often get banned. The other thing that people don't quite understand is the, the way all this works and why this happens. And what you need to know is, if you're listening to my voice right now, pharmaceutical medicine, the average herb has about a hundred can have up to say a hundred compounds in it, created by God or it evolved, whatever your spiritual belief is. But all these work synergistically together, which is why when you take a herb, you tend to get minimal side effects. You tend to get effects, and normally they're positive. We don't know why some of these herbs work. When you take a pharmaceutical product, guess what? I'm not here to say it doesn't work or it gives you nasty side effects. What I'm here to say is we can't patent a herb, and that's where the problem lies. You legally, you can't patent a plant. You can't sell a cactus. You, and you're not even allowed to sell a compound in that cactus. But what you can do is you can chemically change a compound in that cactus, and you can now sell that synthetic compound. So the way often the drug industry works is we, we take uh, a, brilliant, a brilliant herb, say like white willow bark. White willow bark is a herb they made aspirin from. Now, the way aspirin came about is well, we take white willow bark, oh, my stomach upsets, settle, uh, it seems to improve my blood. It seems to have all these positive effects. Well, we can't sell white willow and make it effective money making. So say there's a hundred things there. What's the one thing that seems to be the one thing, the main ingredient? What's the main ingredient in there and what's the main thing that works? Now, let's chemically alter that in, in a laboratory. And after we do that, let's patent it for a good 5, 10, 15 years, depending on the laws. Now, when the patent runs out, we'll change it slightly and we'll give it a new trademark. We'll call it new and improved. Meanwhile, people are dying and they don't have access to herbs. Herbs earlier in the year were banned in the European Union. About 17 or 18 countries, herbs were banned completely. Now, the thing that's even more worrying is the fact that as a society, we've been taught that drugs are powerful and herbs aren't. But you think about the fact that we're replicating nature, which is replicating chemistry, and we're taking one compound, whereas a herb you're getting sometimes up to 100. So herbs are powerful, particularly if you have a herbalist who knows what they're doing and knows how to synergize them.